family of Dina A. DeMeo, Jessica Garvey. Jessica Garvey. <clears throat> Good morning, Judge Therrigan. My name is Jessica Garvey. With me is my mother, Patricia Belanger, and my youngest sister, Christy. Once again, I am here in your courtroom, Judge, on behalf of my sister, Dina Ann DeMeo. On her 30th birthday, she would leave for work one night, never to return. The first time I was in your courtroom, Your Honor, I helped paint the picture of the wonderful woman my sister was. You have had access to the stories that have also portrayed my sister for who she was in life, a go-getter, determined to achieve all she could, never complaining and always smiling. She had more friends than I could ever list and was an important part of so many of our lives. She left an impression on all who met her including the defendants who employed her at their nightclub. She was and will continue to be an inspiration. She was someone I look up to for always succeeding in all she aspired to do, never giving up for her strength and positive attitude, even for her spunkiness and popularity with all her friends and in our family. I never got to tell her these things. I was robbed of that. Your Honor, I could spend all of my time here today telling you about Dina and what she meant to us. But I want to focus on how my family lives today. All we lost and the pain we feel. This pain cannot be measured and is felt on so many different levels. My family was robbed of a lot of things. Justin, Dina's son, lost his mother. My mom lost her oldest daughter. We lost our sister and the chance to really know her. My Auntie Mary Lou, who's in the courtroom today, lost a niece she helped raise and loved like a daughter. Her daughter Tammy, our cousin, lost her confidant, her partner in crime, her best friend. This is just a small fraction of the people affected by Dina's death. We all suffer with Dina's loss every day. Our pain only just began on February 20th, 2003, with the late night news broadcast. I can't begin to describe what it was like those first few days. Can anyone understand what it's like to sit by the television, watching as much as you could of the news coverage before turning away in disbelief, haunted by the images on the screen, but only to be drawn back because you had to know? How can you describe the pain that is felt when the number of dead keeps rising by the hour and you're praying to God that your loved one is not one of them? or being held up in a hotel for a week, doing nothing but sitting there, waiting, thinking, praying, hoping. And when you finally would try to speak, the conversations were always the same. All the questions, the whys, what ifs, how could this happen? When there was only one Jane Doe, and the hospital thought for a moment it might be Dina, I suffered in silence, hoping it wasn't her. Even though I wanted my sister back, I believed Dina would have been able to live with herself if most of her body was burned, if she could not live her life to the fullest like she had before. I also felt as if I was praying, that as I was praying, Dina wasn't the Jane Doe. It was as if I was wishing that horrible fate on someone else. I felt horrible for the feelings of relief when we heard Jane Doe was not Dina. That Jane Doe was Linda Suffoletto, who died as a result of those injuries and was buried on her wedding anniversary. Her husband, Ben, was waiting for her, a victim of this tragedy as well. My family suffered for days before we learned of Dina's death. With each governor's meeting announcing the release of more names, my family's first hopes were that Dina's name was not on that list. My mom, had a nickname for all the workers whose job it was to notify the families. She called them the Grim Reapers because when they came to your table, it was meant your loved one was dead. 
she would cover her name tag there in Dina's name, hoping that that would prevent them from telling us Dina was gone. Eventually, the hope that her life was spared became desperation. We became desperate to know one way or the other. As my family sat and watched the crowd at, at the hotel get thinner, and knowing there was no one left at the hospitals, we desperately wanted to know the truth. But the excruci excruciating waiting continued. The longer we waited, the more I wondered why it was taking so long. Why I haven't been able to identify her yet? When we finally were notified and had Dina's wake, we had to say goodbye to a closed casket. The only reminder of Dina were the pictures surrounding it. There are the horrible thoughts that come with the closed casket. Knowing her body was in such bad condition, we could not see her. Not being able to see my sister made her death even harder to deal with. I never really got to say goodbye to her, only to a box. Hundreds of people came to pay their respects, most truly grieving for over Dina's death. It was difficult for all of us, but Dina's wake was extremely difficult for my mother. And as painful as it already was, it only got worse. The last person in the world my family wanted to see at such a painful and difficult time attended Dina's wake to offer his condolences and seek forgiveness. I don't know why he didn't realize that being there only showed disrespect for our feelings. Whether an employee or not, he did not belong there. Every day my family suffers with the pain of losing Dina. It's the little things that you take for granted that you miss the most. Never to hear her voice again, see her smile, hear her laugh. Three and a half years later and I am still unable to have one beautiful memory of Dina without feeling any pain. My smiles soon disappear and tears of happiness are always followed by tears of sadness, her anger and pain. No matter what the thought of her may be, they're all, always followed by the pain of loss, the horror of her final moments and her death. My family cannot even remember Tina's birthday without thinking about her death. February 20th was a day of celebration in our family. That was Dina's day. Now that day is spent not only mourning her, but 99 beautiful people who died along with her. For me, her birthday will always be foreshadowed by this tragedy. And there are always the questions that constantly go through my head, the hurt caused by what I don't know. Only with more knowledge and understanding can some of that hurt ever be eased. It will never cease, but only become more manageable with understanding of what it is we have had to live through. Will there be a day that I can think of Dina without thinking of the fire? I really don't know. A horrific, tragic, untimely death and the death of 99 others will live on for, in my mind forever. That pain is immeasurable and cannot be spared. Nothing anyone has done has made this any easier for us. When today is over and the story ends for all of you, our story will continue on. We continue to face heartbreak and disappointment. What many of us sought for solace will never be. Dina will always continue to be a part of our lives, just as she was in life. Due to the acts of other individuals, the horrific fire, the devastation and pain of it, and the events following it, will continue to be a part of our lives every day. It is said that time heals all wounds, but time has only brought more pain. No one in this courtroom has spared my family of anything. Dina died in the station fire and nothing will ever change that. Thank you, Ms. Garvey, thank you. Please state your name for the record, please. Patricia Boyanger, I'm Dina's mother. I know after today, these boys will get a slap on the wrist and Jeffrey will get probation. Well, I hope the community service that Jeffrey gets is not picking up garbage on the highways. I hope it's in a burned unit where he can see the suffering that these people are going through day after day. It just may well that be would be the satisfied 
That would satisfy me. Well, good. If this may be. well be. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. So call the next presenter, please. Representing the family of Jeffrey W. Martin, it's Suzanne Fox. Ms. Fox? 